Next we have grand theories. And I'm not gonna go through all of these word for word. I'm gonna kinda go over the gist of it and you can read thoroughly each slide if you'd like. Florence Nightingale was the first nursing theorist and also what we consider the founder of modern nursing. She also opened the first nursing school and taught and used the nursing practice. Now, Florence Nightingale, she practiced nursing during the Crimean War and her whole theory revolved around the fact that if we manipulate the environment, it could contribute to patient health. So she instilled hygiene and proper sanitation, minimal exposure, and keeping a clean environment for our patients during surgery and during care. This means minimal exposure during surgery, only exposing the areas that are being operated on, keeping a sterile technique, using clean technique, things of that nature. She also stressed the importance of nursing assessment. Next, we have Orm's self-care deficit theory. This revolves all around the patient either performing care for themselves or the nurses continuing to assess and perform the care for them until they're able to do it for themselves. Now, it's important to continually assess where they're at in their recovery and how much they're able to do for themselves. Because if we enable them to just have someone else care for them, it's not going to affect them in a positive way once we're ready to discharge them. Henderson's principles and practices of nursing basically just revolves around the 14 activities that patients should be able to do for themselves or that nurses assist our patients with until they are able to go home and be independent or peacefully die. Then we have Johnson's behavioral system. With this one, it's important that we see that patients are more than their disease. They're a collection of behaviors and activities that they maintain in a regular day. It's important that we help them to achieve and maintain balance, especially after an illness. Then we have Newman's systems model. With Newman's systems model, we view the patient as an open system that's constantly exchanging with their environment and their internal self. Our role as nurses is to help them cope with stressors that come from within, that come from their interpersonal relationships, and things that come from the environment. Abdella's patient-centered care is pretty self-explanatory. Every patient should have individualized care based on a general plan that we utilize. We should involve the patient's family in their plan of care or whoever they designate as family. There are 21 nursing problems that Abdella felt that we needed to meet the patient's physical, psychological, and social needs. On this slide, I have the first five. And on this side, I have six through 21. A lot of these are a little more in depth than they really need to be. But the basis of all of this is that we need to care for the patient as a whole and treat every system and make sure that our plan is individualized to the patient. Next, we have Levine's theory of conservation. This all revolves around conserving every aspect of the patient's life as best as we can in the face of their illness. We need to promote balance between our interventions and the patient participation to help patients conserve the energy they need for healing. We need to conserve structural integrity by limiting the extent of tissue involvement and damage, conserve their personal integrity by involving them in their care decisions and also allowing for privacy, and then also conserve their social integrity by facilitating patient interactions with family and loved ones. Next, we have King's Goal Attainment Theory. The nurses should view a patient as a unique personal system that's constantly interacting and transacting with other sy systems. This basically revolves around the idea that, again, every patient is unique and they have a lot of things that make up their life and who they are. So we need to assist them in becoming active participants in their care by working with them to establish goals, their own personal goals, as well as our goals in our care plans for attaining, restoring, and or maintaining health. 
Next, we have Roy's adaptation model, which is very simple. The nurse's role is to help a patient cope and adapt to changes that are going on with them during their illness. They may need help psychologically, physiologically, with understanding who they are now, that they're ill and how their illness will play a role in their life, what their role is in their care, and how to deal with their family. Um, there's usually a lot of struggles because they don't understand how to relate to the patient because they're not ill themselves. So it's really just about helping the patient adapt to their new situation. Next we have Erickson Tomlin Swain's modeling and role modeling theory. Each patient has their own model or world view and we need to understand what plays a factor in that and how we can help contribute to that. They also play a role in allowing them to utilize resources to make appropriate changes or role model attaining optimal health. So this, a lot of this involves education and referrals in helping the patient to maintain the easiest lifestyle they can possible during their illness. Next we have Watson's theory of caring. This one you'll see a lot and it's very important. Um, a lot, there are 10 curative factors that she used in her theory and a lot of them are kind of hard to understand but the basis of it is that we need to understand each aspect of the patient and provide care and not just nursing care. We need to actually care about each individual part of this patient and how we can help them to adjust to what's going on. Next we have Rogers, Parse, Newman's Unitary Beings, Human Becoming, Expanding Consciousness Theory. This stresses again that patients are unique and are constantly in interaction with themselves and with the environment. The basis of this theory is to be truly present with the patient and accept their views. So I'm sure you notice that a lot of these theories are a little bit repetitive and they all kind of go hand in hand. What we need to remember is that we should be caring, all inclusive, involve family, whoever the patient may consider that to be. And we need to understand that a patient is not just their disease. They are an accumulation of many different things, including their culture, their religion, their extracurricular activities, their work. We need to consider all of these while we're providing care. And the reason that these theories are important is because we need to be able to, from beginning to discharge, understand why this patient fell ill, the different behaviors that could be causing it, ways that we can assist in changing these behaviors, resources for these patients who don't know how to change these behaviors. So it's all about acceptance, um, including every aspect of their life, and education.